Alright, how we doing folks? Your boy Marcus1820, the numbers after the names. And man, do we got ourselves a game right here, man. I, I can't even begin to tell you how difficult it to got it for the NES is, man. I mean it's one of these games that like you are world renowned for being like extremely hot, right? And, and, and just a downright one of the toughest games to have been. Every time you talk about like NES games that are very difficult to beat, you know, Ninja Guy is brought up there, Battletoads, uh, Silver Surfer, and then you know, you got your games are just really bad, and that might be a reason. But in terms of games that are actually good and tough to beat, Ninja Guy is right up there in the list. So I was very curious, you know, I wanted to try it out, and I think I mentioned in one of my videos last week how I kind of want to shift between old game, new game, old game, new game, and you know, at least hit like a couple old games, hit a couple new games, you know, kind of keep flip flopping through, and honestly, he's playing a bunch of different systems you know i got a bunch of systems so i want to play them over here play this on the retron 5 which is a work of art for when it comes to playing our retro games just it, just the simplicity of it as in i could pop it in there and just play it with the original controller to me is so much just easier and cleaner to do rather than having to hook up an nes and all the wires and all that stuff uh and then this is the final boss run like these are the final bosses you beat here in the game uh they they are extremely difficult I mean, that first guy we saw, like, he had these little balls that came around from everywhere. It was so tough to hit the middle. You had to hit the little metal, middle red orb. It was so difficult to hit that thing without getting just completely destroyed by all his, like, balls just flying around. This dude, this looks easy now. Like, you know, and, and honestly, when I watch it, I'm kind of like, why did it take me so long? This guy is absurd. So these fire things home in on you. Initially, I spent the beginning part of this whole... And, and I literally, it took me, a second, I think I saw, like, two hours to get through these guys. Uh, just these guys, just these three guys you're gonna see here. Uh, honestly, I don't even know if it took me that long to get through the rest of the game. You know, the rest of the game is difficult. Uh, before I continue talking about this boss, actually, ooh, someone's ringing my buzzer. Uh, the rest of the game is difficult because uh, you got a lot of jumps where there's enemies on and the respawn's kind of strange and whatnot, so it could be a little bit of a pain in the ass in terms of that. Uh, but these guys are just straight up tough, man. Like, if you stay in this top platform like I did initially long enough, you you just don't you just get destroyed because then the, these two flames that initially come out instead of leaving the screen they stay on it and then they get another two flames and all of a sudden just flames everywhere. Also the hitbox on this guy you have to hit him in that eye. But I tell you and you probably saw in this video I missed him so many times and I was I was literally I was hitting it but just wasn't counting and I eventually caught on that there's kind of like a little sound effect that happens uh, when you hit him so I was like all right well I'm not even worried about looking at it I'm just gonna try to hear it. Um, but that took me a while to figure out, you know, and it, it honestly took me a while to figure out where to hit him because of that. I was kind of like, yo, I, I feel like I have to hit him. Do I have to hit him higher? It also took me a while to figure out the strategy of just going down at the bottom of the screen instead of staying up in the middle part. I wanted to stay up in the middle part because you need to be there to hit him. So I was like, I'm not going to last long enough to beat this guy. I need to hit him as quickly as I can. And that was kind of what you did with all the other bosses in this game. You kind of just hit the crap out of them as fast as you can. They switched it up with this guy, though. You really needed patience. And, you know, that's one of the things that you learn from old school games is you just need patience. Uh, and a lot of those jumps that I had a lot of issues with came down to just, yo, know, being very patient and meticulous and planning it out and doing that kind of strategy. One of the big things Ninja Gaiden was huge for were these cutscenes over here. It was very innovative at the time to have a game that had these cutscenes and whatnot uh, and kind of, you know, provide a story to, you know, just deeper than whatever you read in the manual and whatnot. This is the final, final, final boss of the game who comparatively to the other two bosses is cake, but you know, in his own regard, it could be difficult as well, and you kind of have to knock all the other stuff over there while he keeps tossing just crap on you. I don't even know what that is. Uh, the big thing I had with this guy was initially, I also tried to run in here and just spam his little heart thingy. Make sure you try to back up a little bit though, which is what I did here. At least I evaded maybe like one or two, and just evading those two and evading the pushback that you get from really puts you in a position over there to succeed and that's something that you got to take a consequence it's very castlevania-ish in that regard when you get hit you kind of bounce back uh, it's not i didn't think it was as bad as the original castlevania the original castlevania i feel like it really affects your gameplay like it really like messes up like how you play um but in this one i didn't feel it was that bad i just felt that uh it you know it, it let me give it to you this way in a small platform even if you were to get hit by the enemy, you still have a pretty good chance of staying on that small platform. Now, there are platforms designed for you not to stay on. And that is... So this is the fifth game I managed to knock out this year, man. A good pace, man. Very happy with my pace over here this year. I think honestly, I'm going to exceed the, the game per week at this rate, man. I'm hoping, hoping, but you never know. That kind of stuff could like it. That kind of stuff, that kind of stuff, that kind of stuff in life could change. Don't mind that CD just skipping. Uh, I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. 
Uh, I think it's really good. I think it's one of the best NES games I've ever played. Uh, right up well with a game like Batman, uh, kind of in that tier. You know, I don't think it cracks Super Mario Bros. 3 tier, but I think it kind of cracks that tier. And I'm really excited to keep playing NES games, man. They're, they're really good. You know, DNS games are good for, especially at my point in life. The games that could beat fairly quickly, you know, they're not The Witcher 3. You know, there's games you could beat fairly or better than a solid 5. Like, I haven't even touched those games because I don't even have the time to play them. I have Dragon Age Inquisition that I managed to get on a good deal on my PS4. I have no clue when I'm going to touch that thing because it, 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 that, that could take years for me to beat that game. Um, but NES games, you could bang out in a day or two, you know, maybe like anywhere between 5, like a very long NES game, you could bang out in like 5 to 10 hours. Which is feasible for like my schedule and my life. So I got a couple over here coming up, man. Bianca Commando, Blaster Master. I'm looking even the Castlevania games. I managed to get my hands on some Double Dragon games. Might go through those as well. I um, haven't really decided yet how exactly I'm gonna play it out. Uh, and I'm also, you know, on the SNES side, I managed to get myself a hands of Some City. I'm very excited to play that. I haven't played that in a really long time. I got a good story about that, but I'll say it for another day, man. Ninja Gaiden, 8.5 out of 10. I mean, if you're looking for an NES game that's hard, but fair, for the most part, for the most part, there's some respawn. Oh, my God. Anyone who's played this, respawning birds. Oh, the bane of my existence. My girl came in and watched it for a little bit, and she was like, I don't know how you can do this. That bird just keeps clocking you every single time. I'm like, I know, man. I know. What the hell? Bird, stop respawning. They would respawn in the same place and just swoop down. Very similar, not not 100% like the Medusa heads in Castlevania, because the Medusa heads pattern is just very awkward. But the bird itself had this kind of homing pattern that was awkward as well. And hope you guys enjoyed this cutscene, man. I I, I I was I was pretty impressed, you know, by the cutscenes. And graphically, they still hold up. I mean, look at that. That's still, you know, for an 8-bit game, like, that's pretty impressive. Soundtrack, amazing in this game. Uh, gameplay feels tight. A little bit of the jumping off walls doesn't feel that great. I felt like it felt a little bit better in Batman than it did in Ninja Gaiden. There's your first kiss right there. My goodness. I felt like it felt a little bit better in Batman than it did in Ninja Gaiden, but fair enough. You know, it's also a matter of just getting used to it as well. Uh, but Ninja Gaiden, man, if you guys haven't checked it out, April 5 to 10, I, I, I'm i very, very, very big fan of this game. And, you know, I got to cop the sequels now. I, I heard 3 isn't that good, so I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to get 3, but I'm definitely going to get 2. Uh, and it pulled my hair out a little bit more. This is up there, one of the hardest games I've ever beaten, man. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Your boy Marcos, games beaten. Deuces.